you know, I have found so many crazy, crazy things that now I, I almost feel like I am going crazy. Because I almost think that there's a possibility that these things were not manufactured by people. They were living creatures. They were living entities. Now, watch what she says. And I'm going to show you some, what looks like it might be biology. I have no idea. I haven't touched these. I haven't been there. I need to see the microscopic shots of the tissues. Then I'd be able to tell. Watch. And they find some pieces of the pottery. You see this? These things are not hollow. They have something inside of them. And that looks to me just like what you would see on a shoulder tendon. <laughs> and then this kind of stuff here is black and so forth. 100% you could tell one way or the other. That's all I'm caring about. It's one way or the other. Is it possible? And I see signs that show me that, that you know, I see things that say, that, ah, that's crazy. There's no way in the world that's, that's um, real. And then, because I mean, I, they, don't, they, don't, they don't look real, real. But I'm going to show you some things that don't look real, real, and they are real, they real, and I'm 100% real. And they, the team. You see this? This could literally be skin. I am serious. I'm going to show you a couple things, and then, then you'll understand why I say making these statements. The archaeological team came to this area, and they started to uh, dig. Originally, in um, ancient China, like... 3,000 years ago. They believe the afterlife. All right, now, she says they believed in the afterlife, like it's not real, and they went ahead and took their servants with them to the afterlife. Now, what I want you to look at is it what we, what you want to look for is colors of blood, reds in the area where there might have been an artery or somewhere. And then you also look for these tissue types, which I will show you. They call it a feldspar. It's really fascia, and it's very, very easy to see. Now, now, now she's saying that the, the elite, when the elite died, like a king or a noble person, they took these people with them. But now then she makes a determination, oh, they must have just stopped doing that and, and made these out of terracotta. Well, terracotta is clay. That's what we're made out of is clay. When the elites died, like king or um, noble uh, people, they died, and they normally buried their uh, servants with them. So the human sacrifice, and uh, people start criticize the human sacrifice. So they um, think, probably use the target figures as a substitute. That's just total conjecture. There's absolutely no way in the world that they, they could make that determination. They had no, they, there's nothing written about these as far as I know. The only thing that's here, well, I guess there is some things written about it. But I don't know if they wrote that they were terracotta. I don't know. I, I really just started looking into this. But I am seeing things that I think need to be looked into a little closer. Because I literally right at this moment, I am almost the only one on the face, a face of planet Earth that understands the biology of geology. Geology is biology. I've shown it a thousand times. And I want to see those things. I want to see some microscopic shots of the tissue types. Or, well, not when I say tissue types. <laughs> of the clay. Let's put it that way. Because I'm going to show you some things and knock your socks off. And they're real. Okay, my friends, this is human anatomy. And it is very specific. And it can be extremely detailed. Now, notice this right here. If you can see that. This is the kind of thing I'm looking at. Now, this is in the ligament uh, of the uh, femur, which is in your leg. But the your shoulders and so forth have virtually the same thing. Now, this is what I noticed that I want you to take a look at. You see this? All right, like I said, I'm gonna show you things and knock your socks off. That is 100%, no question whatsoever, was a living creature at one time. Now, you look at it and you say, oh, Roger, how can you tell? Well, here's how I can tell. 
these tissue types, first of all, change from lips, eyes, face, all the things. On the layer of the neck underneath, you're going to see blood vessels coming up. There's going to be an artery and a vein. That's just oh, the nature of every creature appears. They have to be supplied and they have to be returned with the blood. In the back of this head, it has flutes and it's cracked and it's a blood red, a red blooded creature. Watch. All right, there's the flutes in the back of the head. You see that? That's cracked. And that is blood, red blood. Now, blood keeps its color. The, uh, the other blood, your vein blood, is, is, is blue in your body and black in mud fossils. The red blood stays primarily red. And that's the back of the head. Now, let me show you the throat. All right, this is right on the bottom of the throat. And you have the the vein and the artery. One of them is red, one of them is black. It's one or the other. It's not a very good shot. It should be more brightly lit and a little damp. Kim, next time, a little damp, a little brighter lit, sweetie. All right, Kim, I've worked with her on this and, um, you know, it has no, no question whatsoever what it is. None. Zero. All right, there's the bottom of the throat. This is where the throat comes up. The chin is out here. It looks like it had a tongue, a forked tongue or something that came out like this. This is some structures that, you know, like the tendons of the neck or something and the neck bone. I don't know, whatever it is. But this, it's, the damn thing was real. You see that? This, this is how this whole thing basically started. This, this head was real too, absolutely 100%. And it, Arlie Caudill, and uh, it, it belongs to Arlie Caudill, Jim Burchill, and I researched it. And uh, Jim took it down, it had a cat skin and everything. There's the nose, there's the cartilage in the nose, there's the flesh of the nose pushed off. There's the guy eye. You know, if you look at these things and take your time and look very carefully, I mean, it just looks like sandstone. And that's what, here's what the real problem was. Scott Walter got on TV, said, oh, that's just a sandstone head. That's nothing. And he made a, you know, he just destroyed my research. That is a real head. That is blood. It can even be tested now. I was the first one to have DNA tested on these ancient things. And I had, uh, well, this was tested. Right here, a giant human fingertip. I don't care what anybody says. It's real. It's tested. It's DNA certified. It's CAT scan. It's checked out by an anatomist. And inside of these things, it's not mud inside. Inside it had a body tissue type, and which is different than the surface flesh. And the terracotta warriors, I saw some things in there that I... That, I don't know what to think for sure, but inside it's different than the surface. If it's inside is different, I want to see it because the surface can change. Like this is a goose. You see, it's solid as a goose, but th that that is the feathers of the pattern of the goose's head. But this fabric has tissues within it that are definable. They can change depending upon the conditions that it finds itself in the ground. Like right here, this is a new species, a noto. We have these in huge amounts. We know, you know, they were all over the earth, these notos. And inside, again, it's a different structure inside than the fabric of the tissue of life, the outside of life. Now, the other thing that happens is sometimes they become severely invaded with heavy molecules depending upon what's in the water in that area. Whatever's in an aqueous solution eventually makes its way inside and, and stabilizes whatever it's invading. In the case of these terracotta warriors, it was either clay, but they weigh 600 pounds. So that whole thing was a solid structure of some sort, whether it was an actual creature, I have no idea, or whether it was just something stuffed and they put a bunch of clay around it and made it look like a person. But I have found so many abnormalities and so many anomalies that nobody ever suspected. Well, may I show you something else? Hold on. All right, I want to make something clear. Just because it's a lung doesn't mean it's going to look exactly the same every time. That's a lung, no question whatsoever. These are the lobes of the lung, just like those. 
and that is the blood in the lung and it actually literally leaked out on my bench now there's a lung and this one's dna certified as human that it has still has the fascia and the pleura on it which is the coating that that would have had on it so this is inside of that now however even if it was this was exactly the same still had its pleura on there it may look entirely different it may look it may ha have been in a condition where it, it went like this it, it depends on the conditions they're in and the minerals that are in it what invades it let's just stay with that like this is a bone that's a bonehead and that's it looks like just dirt and clay and and you know but that was what was inside of it. Now, if that's what's inside of these Terracara warriors, we got an issue here. You know, I didn't realize they were solid. I thought they were hollow. All right, so let's, let's look into it. All right, I can't tell you where this is from. This person does not want to be identified, but this is an Egyptian head. Now, watch this. All right, there is, again, different shot. Okay, there it is again, different shot. Now, don't forget, I said there's some of them that will have this type of texture, and some of them that will have this type of texture. It depends on where it was and what invaded it. Now, the terracotta warriors could have a whole different issue of chemistry. See, here's that head again. Here's the key right here. Here's the neck bone. That's not just an accident that that's in there. And I, well, let me show you some more. Here's a side shot. It's like a, one of those long-headed Egyptian. Very small, though. It could be a child. could be a, a full-grown adult. I have no clue. <coughs> Excuse me. There's another shot. All right. This is the clincher. You see that hole right there? And you see that right there? That's the artery and the vein. This, I believe, is the nerves. Possibly the vagus nerve attachment goes up and comes back. But this is 100%, and it can be tested. They didn't put that in there for, it accidentally just dropped in there. There's like muscles that go up in your neck, tendons and muscles, and then the structure of the throat and so forth. These things are obvious if they are taken into account and, and thought about and not just dis dismissed which is what, what has happened all right there's there's the head now when anybody would look at that they would say oh that can't possibly be real well I'm going to tell you something once you start to study what the tissues of the body are made of this is what's called intersection areolar tissue there's tiny little holes everywhere and they're filled with fluid and then there's straps and balls that make everything stretch and come back to where it's supposed to be this i believe is still literally skin that is on this face and this my friends you say oh somebody must have pasted that in and made that lip no if you look at this carefully you'll understand these little separations, these are the, the things that allow your lip to do all this kind of stuff. Same thing at the bottom, it has the same things. And you see this sticking down? You have to look at these things carefully. You see that? And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Those are the things that come up to your lip so your lip can do all these things and jiggle around and flip and do all that kind of stuff. This is, was in some kind of a condition that it stabilized the tissues that were the little balls and so forth and straps but it, it flushed out the fluid bags let me show you what intersection is and i discovered intersection working with mud fossils they have no clue about this until i discovered in about 2013 or so somewhere around there and it, and um it just came out with saying yeah it's it's real it's intersection it's i'll show you <laughs> I've really been working this one. <laughs> Look at this interstitium, a new organ discovered in the human body after previously missed by scientists. Acts as a shock absorber. That's all those little bags. And they're fluid filled bags. And understanding, you know, they're talking about cancer. But this is March 2018. This is a new, they just discovered it. Well, I just discovered it. And here's what it is these are the, where these bags all empty out inside the, the skin. And then you end up with these pockets all over it. 
That's what the interstitching is. And then you end up with the balls and these straps. And that's what we saw in that Egyptian looking head. And I, I find it everywhere here and there. But in other areas, this fills in with, with what they would call basalt or silica or some form of chemistry. Fills this all in and then it's solid. Like this would have had fluid fills bags in it. Just like I, we do. Just like us. Now this has fluid filled bags in it. Oop. And some of them just went leaked out. Well, let me show you something. You, you saw that head. Let me show you the toe that comes up from the other end of this creature about 60 or 70 feet away from the fingers where the hand was. And here's the hand. Hold on. Alright, this is a hand. And here's exactly what it would look like. There's that strap that runs down. Put yours down, you'll see the same thing. Here's the pad that your bumper hand has right here. And it runs right down to here, this fleshy looking stuff. Then you're going to have that strap. That's where your thumb comes off to that side. It's only about to here. Right about here somewhere. This is, and it's 36 inches wide. And now, you see this here silvery looking stuff? That is what's called grip skin, friction skin. You see it? It's, it's peeling off here. That is the thick layer of skin, which is tough as hell. And it is loaded with all these fibers, and I show all that. And I could tell different types of skin, the face skin versus the grip skin, and all these different things. Very, very simple now for me to understand what's going on here. And I understand the fabric of life, because the fabric of life is this. All right, get, get any of your anatomists, and they'll understand. That is a distal phalanges apical, uh, well, that's the apical tough. This is the distal phalanges finger bone. That's the vein, that's the artery, and it stains, it's called bone black, same as like this, where metals from the iron inside the ferritin, which is inside the bone, leaks out and gives it a stain showing what the bone looks like and that's exactly what it looks like see that's the same sort of situation that is the apical tuft human beings have the largest apical tuft of any creature on the planet even gorillas and everything else that's the very tip of our finger and it's just an anomaly i don't know why now you see how this is like clay look it just looks like clay well that is one of the fingers that was in the same hole where this came out of. It just was in a in a area where it eroded much more than this one. This one hardly eroded at all. And it's been DNA certified. So it, it, it is oops, it is human and I think I showed the hand and the grip skin and all that. Oh here is the uh hold on. Here is the uh that's the lung this was certified too. This right here is the toe. <laughs> from the other end of that finger. Now, this, oh man, these babies get heavy. All right, that, that you see how many holes and, and stuff is in there? Now look, I can tell you it's a toe, the toe, and I'm 100% sure of that. You see the end here? You see the, the holes here? Well, I don't know what you call them holes, but they're tendon attachments there hard for you to see. Hold on. Oops, that doesn't work. All I can say is trust me, It's that's one of the toes. And it was oop, found way on the other end of the pro well, 60-70 feet away from the hand. And it, it, it is, that's what it is. You see the end there? If you look at it, you know what you're looking at. You can see the actual attachments, one on each side. You see it? Boom, boom. All right. This is all very, very real. And it's, these are, and it's giant human beings. So it's time to, um, to at least look. Now we have new species, creatures nobody's ever even considered before, giants, things, the, the, I mean so much, I don't even want to talk about some of the things, because it, it, it goes even beyond that, way beyond that, so far beyond that, 
you're never going to get there until you start from here. Because this is the simple stuff right now. You just saw the easy stuff. Ha, ha, ha.